Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation is based on the Gospel lesson just read, Jesus' encounter with the deaf man. You will see that though the sinner should rightfully fear the Lord, who knows every impairment of your soul, he approaches your heart in mercy, his sole desire to open your ears to his life-giving word. Again, the people praise the great physician Jesus. He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. So far the text, let us pray. O Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. Growing up on the East Coast, the very worst threat a child could receive was a visit to the ear doctor. When told to take care of a chore three times over, but you act as if you never heard a word of the request, your name repeatedly bellowed throughout the house with no response. All my years growing up, Whenever a child refused to listen, not only was the diagnosis clear, there was a local professional with the expertise to solve the problem. Maybe what you need is a visit to the ear doctor. When caught daydreaming at school and no finger snap from the teacher could call you back to reality, should I send you to the office to have your ears checked? Spoken in a tone of voice, which called the entire classroom to order. Grandmother, telephone in hand. I can get you an appointment this afternoon if you'd like. As if she had the ear doctor's phone number memorized. He even had a name. And for some reason, local doctors always seem to have scary foreign-sounding names like Dr. Zuckley or Dr. Scherzinger. What happened on one of these visits to the ear doctor? The very thought of a man you never met before in your life, poking into your ears with fingers, needles, who knows what, interrogating you with question after question in a thick Eastern European accent. How could you have any idea what he was asking? The ear exam was a test you could only fail. Thus, the threat alone was enough to cure a child in an instant. Which is why all my years growing up, I never did get to meet him. And why I'm not convinced he actually existed. Now, maybe the threat of the ear doctor was more of an East Coast parenting technique. But you no doubt suffer some fear of the medical profession. Why else would you so craftily avoid your share of doctor's appointments? Argue with experts in your head as to why they are wrong or when you want them to be. Why get all worked up if you didn't have a sneaking suspicion there was something for him to find. Some creeping sense of guilt over self-care you know you've given no attention to. Check my ears as a grown adult, personally speaking, go right ahead. Step on the scale. Let's not be unreasonable. The same goes for anyone you would rather avoid, doctor or not. Any topic of conversation you dread being brought up again. Whether you want to admit it or can even put it to words, a creeping sense of guilt over something you've done wrong or let go. A situation you were so worked up over you can't even clearly remember who said what. In other words, You'd have no problem with any 
difficult conversation, no problem with any in-person accountability if you didn't have a problem with your spiritual ears. Doctors don't make house calls anymore, but I do. And at times, I've found that the pastor rapping on the door can evoke as much anxiety as the threat of a Polish man you've never met showing up to poke about in your ears, as if I only show up to be critical, to make sure you feel there's something you've been neglecting, to show you your sins. Well, you can try and hide away from whoever you'd like in life. Pretend you did not hear whatever advice proves mildly inconvenient. Or clean up your act just enough for grandma to put down the phone. But there's no avoiding your appointment with the God from whom no secrets are hid. The full inspection no man can avoid. On that day, there will be not a thing wrong with your hearing. The question is, what will he have to say? Well, good thing for you and me, there is a man with all the expertise we need. More than a professional, giving him a good listen this day is all you need to pass the exam the final day. This doctor, he does exist. He even has a name. That name, Jesus. Which means what you see happening in our gospel lesson today is a visit to the ear doctor with life-changing results. It's not the first time the deaf man's been brought to a medical professional. From the earliest days, his parents first suspected something might be wrong. Awkward claps about the little boy's head peering into his ears down his throat in examination. But all the medical professionals of Jesus' day could do with their poking and prodding was end up with the profound diagnosis, there's something wrong with your child's ears. Jesus' encounter with the deaf mute happens in the Greek settlement of the Decapolis, a pagan region riddled with quack healers and all sorts of wacky treatments. Superstitious rituals, which would have included shoving herbal sticks into the deaf man's ears, yanking on his tongue, and, as odd as it sounds, human saliva, as if a spittle transplant from a person who could talk could bring a dead tongue to life. A visit to the ear doctor then, my childhood boogeyman, was this deaf boy's regular experience. All my worst fears, his reality. With all this as background, you, you can begin to see it from his perspective dragged to yet one more appointment with a so-called ear doctor, a scenario he'd sadly grown accustomed to. This time, wouldn't you know, it's a foreigner with the odd-sounding name Yeshu Nathraya, Jesus of Nazareth. So it begins, a tap on the tongue, a poke in the ear, a moan and sigh before his eyes. Jesus enunciating his words with such emphasis, the deaf man could almost feel Jesus spittle on his face. Only difference when this doctor does it, when Jesus speaks in his thick Jewish accent, the Greek word epatha, it works. The deaf man hears, understands clear as day, and for the first time in his life, listens and obeys. Straightway his ears were open, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. This is no ordinary doctor. This is the great physician of 
both body and soul, come to make you whole, with an authority to dispel every fear of life and death, Jesus licensed to practice came at a cost far greater than any medical degree. When Jesus, the only sinless man to have walked the earth, no health history, never a sick day, not one broken bone, fell one evening, all of a sudden, to his knees, in an anguish so severe, he sweat great drops of blood, poked and prodded throughout the night by the wicked doctors of Jerusalem, all to no avail, he could answer them not a word. There wasn't a thing he needed to say. The scriptures speak plain on his behalf that there on his bitter cross, the Son of God himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Every disease of your body, every ailment of your soul, into his body, into his soul, down into the grave, so that Jesus could conquer them all by reversing that one condition no other doctor could, death. What well, Jesus can cure anything, why doesn't he just do it now? So thought a woman named Martha, who, when her brother Lazarus lay in the grave, near accuses Jesus of malpractice. If you'd gotten here sooner, you could have done something about this. Jesus spells out in no uncertain terms that though Lazarus' body had failed, Lazarus himself was very much still alive. I am the resurrection, Jesus said. I am the life. He that believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Because no, but because no one else in the crowd seemed to have ears were worked. Jesus decides instead to talk to the dead man. Lazarus, come forth. And he does. A dead man listens and obeys better than anyone else within earshot. Sits back up and walks right out of his grave. Yes, Jesus, you've called me. Someday, the same thing's going to happen to you. And when it does, not only will there be no problem with your ears, there's no question what you will hear. When Jesus calls you by your name, redeemed in his name, receive the eternal life purchased and won for you. This voice of Jesus has the power to work not only your resurrection from the dead, but the greater miracle of obedience in your heart here and now called faith. And from faith to have all sorts of other senses renewed. As with the forgiveness of all your sins comes an increased awareness of the variety of spiritual ailments which burden others in your life. No longer so deaf to them, an awareness which allows you to listen to them in compassion. Faith even comes with a remarkable ability to hear yourself talk and the opportunity for an honest reflection on what you sound like when you do. Now, all this can be overwhelming, all this grace flooding your system all at once, which is why Jesus sends you home with a self-care regimen. 
the most powerful medicine being on the end of your fork, the great physician first prescribes a steady diet on his word. This is no passive assignment. It means keeping and reviewing a comprehensive personal log of how you have used your day or not in light of the Ten Commandments. As Luther elaborates, to consider whether you have been disobedient, unfaithful, slothful, whether you've grieved anyone by word or deed, whether you've done injury to anyone in body or soul. Then washing any wounds you find and there'll be some wounds in there, washing them by drowning that old man deep within with the balm of a good, solid Lutheran devotion and him. Keeping as a priority weekly, in-person, follow-up appointments right here, where, yes, you get poked a bit in the ear, by an East Coast foreigner with his own funny way of talking, but only that we might keep one another in balance in the one true faith through word and Sabbath. Through all this, you end up with so thorough a spiritual ear cleaning. It makes you ready and eager to listen to anything your God has to say part of which is a request for you to now go make house calls on those still, for whatever reason, still stuck sitting at home. Not just the pastor, the Great Commission sends every Christian back out into the life individually yours as a fully licensed physician's assistant. As Jesus places in his all-forgiving grace the healing power of his voice into your once spiritually dead mouth. Jesus, it would seem, makes it look too easy. One word, epitha, problem solved. It might take more than one appointment with you or me, but with both law and gospel, you have every tool you need keeping in mind that assumption that you've only shown up to show them their sins, maybe showing up a little more often when things are perfectly fine and commanding what is going well might help any bitter medicine you have to bring go down easier. The one and only ear doctor, there is no reason to fear. Gladly hear and learn his life-giving word. And have your strength renewed to confess both your dying day and rising day. He indeed hath done all things well. Now the peace that passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.